Uh, good morning, folks. It's Richard Jean, the fishing machine. I'm going to show you a very easy way, inexpensive way, to catch a big panfish. It don't matter if you're fishing a creek, a small river, a pond, a lake, or a big river system. This technique will work. All right, folks, let's talk a little bit about tackle. Now, even if you're beginning, you might as well begin the right way, in my opinion, or what I feel like is the right way. To have fun catching panfish, especially if you're going to target, like I do, the biggest panfish that you can out of wherever you're going to fish. And in this case, it's just a creek. To have fun, to maximize your fun, the wimpiest rod you can get a hold of. Now this is an ultralight uh, falcon rod, six foot long, wimpy, real limber. Okay, this rod is suitable for two pound test line. Now this is high vis line, which I love high vis line, whether it's for crappie or for any panfish, simply because I can see the strike. I'm a line watcher. I can see that line just as it touches the water jump. And it's very important to set the hook right then, especially if you're using live bait or a couple seconds afterwards to keep the fish from swallowing it, especially if you're going to release them. Um, but the kind of line that I like, I get a lot of questions about this. This is vicious fishing. Well, this is Vicious Panfish is the name of it. All right, this is two-pound test monofilament line, high-vis. Now, this stuff right here is strong. For the two- and four-pound test is very strong for a light, light line. Now, hooks, right here I have one tied on, and I'll show you what it is. And I've been using them just here recently, and I love them. I absolutely love them. Uh, made by owners, uh, mosquito hooks. Okay, and this is a size eight, which I'm going to start off with, and this is also a size ten. Either one will work well. When you're fishing for big panfish, that's a great size. Even a size six is a great, great size. Now, if you can't find them. Just a regular Eagle Claw Aberdeen hook, size 8 or a size 6 will work for these big panfish. Um, that's just a light wire hook, and it's a doggone good one. It's an oldie but goodie. Good hook. Now, as far as uh, bullet weights, if you're just now getting into fishing, um, or BB shots, you can refer to them as that. I'll use the smallest one, if you can look right there, the smallest one that I can use for the fishing conditions that I'm fishing. Um, like in a creek situation where the water is very, very shallow, and let's say it's a lazy current, I'll use a small BB shot. What that's going to do, and I preach this in my fishing. In my opinion, you'll get far more bites by using as light a weight as you possibly can. And that applies to all species, folks. All species. Now, when you're when you, when you're talking about crimping, and I don't like to crimp on the two-pound test line, but I'll do it in cer certain situations. Remember, when you crimp a split shot you can actually weaken, especially monofilament line, you can weak, weaken that line, it's already weak. You're fishing ultralight, but when you crimp that, you need to do it in a such a such manner. And by that I mean very lightly. Even though lead is a soft, soft material, y'all excuse me, Still, if you crimp it too much onto this little line, you could get a bite, set the hook, and it will pop right there at the split shot. And that would be unfortunate, especially if you're fishing for big panfish. 
and believe you me, they do exist in a lot of these creeks. It's just a matter of hunting them, knowing what to look for, uh, anything different. But we'll go ahead. I'm going to show you. I'm actually going to crimp this on. And usually I'll go up anywhere from 10 to, to 12 inches. That's pretty good. Um, away from the hook. That way, that bait will look more natural. But crimp it on light. See right there, there's a split shot. Real light like that. Now if it slips, then so be it. You're better off for it to slip a little bit than for it to be real tight where it will damage your line. That's just a little tip right there, in my opinion. And of course, the best knot, in my opinion, is going to be a Palomar knot. If you're using this light line, you need a strong knot. And the Palomar knot has been proven to be one of the strongest connections that you can use. You know, and there's a lot of arguments about that, but I don't know why. Paul Elias proved that. Um, he was a famous bass fisherman. Probably, if y'all remember Paul Elias, he proved that that was the strongest knot that you could tie. But uh, be it what it may, tie the one that you're the most confident in. You know, folks, if, if a creek is clear enough, and we have a lot of clear creeks here in North Alabama and around Tennessee, if the creeks are clear enough, I'll ease normally up the current, sometimes down the current, and I'll visually look for these fish. Now the places that I'm looking for is anything unusual. Um, it, a lot of times it can be like a big flat rock under, and the rock may not be but about that thick, but under the rock because of the current, you know, a lot of, the, a lot of them is concaved and there's a space about like that. Now, during the day, a lot of fish will get up under rocks like that and hide. And the reason why they do that is because of hawks, uh, eagles, things of that nature. They'll just get up under there and hide. And, they'll, and if you can posi position yourself just right in front of rocks that has um, concave indentions in them like that where fish will run up under, if you can position yourself just right and throw in front of that rock, those fish will ease out of there and grab your offering. And a lot of cases, that's where the bigger panfish live. They're not evident. You'll see the smaller ones everywhere. But the bigger fish will hide because their, their instincts is much better than the smaller fish. They've been around a long time. And they're big for a reason, because they know how to survive. Now the kind of worms that I use or have been using are wang wagglers, wanglers, and I get these at Walmart, believe it or not. Now these, and I love night crawlers, but night crawlers this time of the year is really out of the question here in the south, unless you put them on ice because they die very quickly. These can take the heat, uh, if you'll read on them. No refrigerated ration needed. They even got the average size, they're approximately three inches long. Um, enriched with nutrients for a long life. These are tough worms. They're great for here in the south. And you know, I'm a sticker on these worms as far as wadding them up on a hook and making a little old bitty ball that looks unnatural. Let me explain to y'all something about worms. Um, we have a lot of them here in the south, and I'm sure in the north it's the same way. There's not much difference. Heavy rains will wash them from, you know, we have a lot, our creeks are set up normally in between two hills. There'll be a hill on each side, in a lot of cases mountains. When it rains, a lot of water influxes in into these creeks. We get some hard rains and it will wash worms into the creek. Worms is a natural forage for these fish, not just in creeks, rivers, lakes, streams. It don't make any difference. They're a natural forage, and they don't look like a little ball wadded up, and the fish are feeding on them, folks. They look like this in the water. 
That's why I just hook them one time with the smallest hook that I possibly can use. That way they can wiggle. See all that wiggle? Well, when you ball them up into a little old bitty ball, them things ain't just barely, maybe the end of it can move a little bit. It's really an unnatural presentation. Now, panfish is just like a bass or, or any predator fish. When they come up to a worm, they'll open their mouth, flare their gills. They're not biting the bait. They're inhaling the bait in. They'll inhale that, that worm in, especially the bigger ones, without any trouble. Wait a couple of seconds and set the hook. Oh, sure, you're going to miss a few small ones, but do you really want to catch the little bitty ones if you're targeting the biggest ones you can find? But that will get the job done right there I guarantee you now if you're gonna fish out here in the creek you can either strap something around your neck some kind of a something put you some worms in it or you can put them in a bag like this right here and that'll get rid of all the dirt you don't have to worry about getting your hands dirty but me I don't care about I mean it don't matter if I get my hands dirty or not but it's a convenient way just to zip it back up. And this bag is leaking a little bit, but it don't make any difference. It's not killing the worms. And just put it in one of your pockets right there, and then you got your bait in your pocket. You don't have to worry about it. Um, they'll stay alive until you get done fishing. And all is good. You don't get a bunch of dirt. Of course, I, like I said, I don't care about stuff like that. What my main focus is to catch a fish. I'm going to tell you something. I'm just going to drop that right there. That's a big bluegill or something. I don't know what it is. There we go. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Oh my goodness, I got a monster shell cracker on right here, folks. <laughs> I tell you what I done right here. I got hung up. I was way over there and I made a cast over here. I got hung up and I come over here and got it unhung. It was right here on this rock. I looked and I seen that shell cracker but I didn't know if it was a shell cracker or what I could tell it was a panfish this is a giant this is a giant shell cracker right here this is a big one okay he's finally tired golly that's a big one from a creek giant that is a giant from a creek quit fighting Y'all look at there. Oh my goodness, what a shell cracker. Folks, I want you to look what a big shell cracker. That is a big one from a creek. This is a creek. That's a huge shell cracker. A lot bigger in my hand. Let's let him go real quick. Let's get him right here and we'll let him go. That's a huge shell cracker from a creek. And he's beautiful too. Let's revive him right here. I had to walk over here in the sun so y'all could see and appreciate how big a fish that is. And he's a good one. There he goes. Look at there. Wow. Okay, folks, let's, let's sneak back there again. I'm excited. I love this. I can stay cool like this. And you can too. I mean, when it's this hot, the dog days of summer, this is what need do right here. This is what need do to keep yourself in good shape. I mean, it's too hot out here to just, for a lake situation, if I go, I won't go very long. I mean, I'm going to come right back. But like this, you can get out here and adventure. It don't matter how hot it is and enjoy yourself. But look, this is so simple, just a split shot, two pound test line. This is a, um, now I'm using a size uh, 8 owner hook, okay, and I'm a red worm, and I'm just hooking him one time, 
and the distance from there it don't really matter i'm i'm going with about oh 10 11 inches right now but it, that part don't really matter what matters is that red worm <laughs> natural presentation no doubt it'll get the job done you're going to catch them uh, let me sneak back up here i don't want to disturb these fish All right, folks, let's pitch it right there. I thought I seen a fish swimming around right, right in this area here. There he is. There we go. Oh, that's a good one. Thank nothing. That's another good fish. Golly, bum. That's a shell cracker. What about this? I've never, it's been a long time since I've fished in a creek that had this many shell cracker. I know of one other, but it's a long ways from here that's got them. It's kindly unusual for this part of the country. Now, I don't know about, look here, beautiful, beautiful shell daddy. I love catching them. Now, when I stuck that fish, quit, I thought he was bigger than that. But what I'm doing right here, to be honest with y'all, I'm, I'm catching a lot of shell cracker. That's exactly what's going on. And if I'd have known this, I'd have brought me a stringer and we'd had shell cracker for supper because I love them. All right, folks, let's let him go. Ain't that pretty. You get on back. Look at there. He's gone. My goodness. Doggone, let's catch another one. They could be another one or two right there. I don't know. I don't know. We'll darn sure try to catch one. I guarantee you that. Hey, man, I don't care what I catch. I love to catch shell daddies. Woo. Hey, man. Woo. Matter of fact, I see one right there. That's a big shell cracker. If we can get that fish to bite, oh my, my, oh my goodness, this is a big one, folks. Y'all be, y'all be real quiet. This is a giant. If he'll just give me a chance. There's a fish. There he is, folks. I got that shell cracker. I got the one I was talking about. Or I got him so far. That's a big one. That is another giant right here. I just kept on messing with him. And believe it or not, a little old bitty red worm caught him. Little bitty red worm. He wanted something small. This is a big son of a gun. <laughs> oh my goodness. King Cone for a creek. Golly, look at him. Y'all see that? Man, I love it. I love the sport of fishing. Big blessing right here. Big old blessing. Look at there, what a fish. I want y'all to look. Golly. That thing is huge. Now, as soon as I... There's another one out there. There's another one out there. I thought, hey man, I thought that this one right here, hey, what I'm gonna do, we're gonna go to the bank. I'm gonna get my forceps out. Okay. Okay, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go to the bank, get my forceps out, unhook this fish, then I'm gonna take him down yonder so he'll go that way because there's there's another one in there that possibly could be bigger than this one. Look at that, what a fish. Beautiful. Beautiful fish. But yeah, I'm going to get him away from them other ones because that other one looked like the one. This, this one right here may not be the big one. I know that's hard to, hard to believe, but I know what I'm seeing. They shine up really white. 
the reddier sunfish will. And that thing was big. I seen it. So let's let this one go right here. Big old thing. Wow. While we walking back, I'll tell y'all a story. When I lived in central Florida, we would catch grass shrimp. And they're just, you can see plumb through them, but if you would, as you was catching them, I would pick out the biggest one, biggest ones that I could get. And they would be, you know, about that long, inch and a quarter is a really big one. And uh, red ear sunfish love them in Florida. And they're so good for them that that's the reason why they're so big from central Florida all the way to Lake Okeechobee. Now, you have some tremendously big shell cracker, you know, in, in that area. But for this area, those are equivalent to the great good ones in Florida because that, them are big ones. And they're right there, right there where that tree is. All right, let's go back over and get another one. Woo, man, let's do it. Let's get another one. Woo, I'll smell them flyers with my nose. My nostrils will move like a little, like, see they're moving right now for the smelling part of it. There he is. Golly bump. Man, oh man. Get out of there. This is a big one right here, folks. I'm going after him. This is a big shell cracker right here. This is the one I was talking about. I hope he don't break off. He's so strong that I can't do nothing with him. Goodness, let's get him out of that tree. Look here. That's the one. I finally got him. This was the one that I was talking about. I don't want him so let me, let me get him away from that tree. This is a big one. <laughs> That's the one that I've been at her the whole time. Let y'all look. Golly, we gotta take a look at this one. That's a giant. That is a giant right there. That took a lot of effort, a lot of time to do that, but it's worth it. You know, you, you're not gonna get nothing for not doing nothing. You gotta do something to get to do something. I don't know, y'all know what I'm saying. I ain't got time for that right now. I don't wanna lose this fish, it's a big one. Man, I love this stuff. See how that line's not breaking, folks. That is an absolute giant. I'd love the way that fish. That is a big shell cracker. When I set the hook into that fish, y'all seen how he stripped. He stripped, I don't know what, 10 yards of line probably and to get in that tree to break me off. He knew where that tree was. But uh, that's the best job I can do. I can't, I don't have a tripod. Uh, I should have brought one up and, and so I could set it up. I'm excited. That fish, I stayed at her that fish until I got him. I stayed at her. Let's let him go. All right, folks, let's let him go. My goodness, what a shell, Daddy. What a fish, folks. That was worth all that walking I've done. I guarantee y'all. What a blessing. That's another thing about these creeks now. I mean, <laughs> just certain places is going to hold the fish. But when you find them, they'll be loaded up. Especially when, when a creek is down like this. Usually the deep holes is going to be the best, or the deeper holes. That old woman's got hair on her legs a lot longer than mine. All right, 
Folks, let's try it right here. This is just a deep. Look here, we're done bit that quick. What in the world have we got? This is just a deep hole. Man, you talking about a big bluegill. This is just a regular bluegill, and it's a good one, too. Look here, what a fish. From a creek. God, it's a giant bluegill. Shell cracker and giant bluegill in this creek. I was fixing to say this is nothing more than... Let me show y'all what we got right here. Look at there, what a bluegill. Let's let him go. You know, folks, when it comes to creeks, there's certain locations that's going to hold fish and certain locations that's not. And once you develop a little bit of a pattern, you'll be able to catch a lot of fish in these creeks, especially in the summertime. When they're low, if you, if you can figure it out, you can get a pattern. But the problem is, how far will you have to walk before you can find an identical place or, uh, or an identical situation as far as depth or structure. And uh, that question is hard to answer. But if you do, you'll find more times than not, it'll be loaded with fish too. So I want to say God bless each and every one of y'all. Thank y'all for all the great comments. Everything y'all do is more than appreciated, folks. Hey. Woo. Woo. The mosquitoes is biting because it's hot and it's humid. The mosquitoes is a biting. <laughs> woo, 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 woo. And to remember, go fishing when you can, because it's good food.